Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it's part three of the Vogue 9345 Sew Along. Today we're going to be finishing off the bodice, we're going to be attaching the skirt, and we're going to be doing all the hand sewing to finish off the dress. So let's get started. So the next thing that we need to do is pin collar to neck edge, interface side down, clipping bodice neck edge where necessary and baste. Now there are two notches to match up, but I also like to mark the centre back seam of the, or the centre back of the yoke and also the collar, just to give me another point to match up. And these should also match up with the large circles which we stay stitched to earlier on our neckline. So I'm going to get it pinned in. And get it sewn in. Okay collar is all pinned in. I have the interfacing side face down. I've matched up the center center of both the collar and the back neckline. I've also matched up the notches and then I have just eased the collar into place. I haven't had to clip the curves. This fabric is quite forgiving. You may need to clip curves if you are using a stiffer fabric. So I'm going to base this into place at three eighths of an inch ready for the facing to go over the top and finish this edge. Okay so I'm going to deviate a little bit from the plan here because I want to do some different things. So the first thing that it wants us to do is turn in the seam allowance on the lower back edge of the yoke and front facing. I still think I'm going to be able to burrito this so I'm not going to do that and it is going to be fairly easy to, to just press this edge up later if it turns out that I can't burrito the yoke. So it wants me to finish the long un unnotched edges of the bodice front facings which I'm going to actually sew these to the skirt front facings together because I want to finish the unnotched edge with bias binding continuously. So I'm going to sew thir piece 13 to piece number 18 at the waist seam with 5 eighths of an inch allowance. Okay, so I have sewn the front bodice facing to the skirt facing at the waist seam at 5 eighths of an inch. And then I am finishing the unnotched edge. So the, there's a notch there, and this is what's going to get sewn to the bodice. I've, I'm finishing the unnotched edge with bias binding. You can do overlocking, you could use a zigzag stitch, you could turn it and under and stitch it down, or you could use pinking shears, but I prefer bias binding. So I've sewn my bias binding with the right side of the binding to the wrong side of the fabric or the front facing piece. And I have stitched in the ditch, which you can just about see, the joys of working with black. So I've stitched in that ditch there. So I'm now going to wrap the binding around to the front and top stitch it down to finish off that edge. And I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so I use my blind hem foot because it has this guide and I can move my needle over to the left. So I don't pin the binding down, but with my right hand, my right forefinger, I press the fabric flat. And then with my left hand, I press the binding flat and then I sew, which is very weird to do through the viewfinder. So I'm just pushing the fabric flat with my right hand or my right finger and then with my left I'm rolling the bias binding over so that it nice, lies nice and flatly. And I'm just going to do that all the way along. And I'm going to do that for both facing pieces. And I want the bias binding to be continuous the whole way down the front facing which is why I have sewn the skirt facing to the bodice facing so that I don't end up with a join in the bias binding but it just means that when we come to sew the facing to the front bodice we won't sew all the way down to the waist so we're going to leave a little gap here so that when we sew the actual bodice to the skirt we can then sew this in one continuous clean line so um, I'll show you what I mean when we get to do when we get to sew the facing onto the bodice but we won't be sewing it all the way down to the waist seam okay so I finished the edge of my facings the next thing that we need to do is stitch bodice front facing sections to front edges of yoke facing pressing seam allowance toward yoke facing turning in remainder of seam allowance as shown so I am going to stitch on my front facings to my yoke and press everything towards the yoke 
Okay, so I have the front facings pinned to the yoke and the the uh, the front facings are only about half the size of the well a, three, a third of the size of the shoulder seam of the yoke so i'm going to sew those in place at five eighths of an inch for both of those and then we're going to press the whole seam allowance back towards the yoke itself okay so now it wants us to stay stitch the neck edge of the facing between the large circles then we can pin facing to bodice at front opening and neck edges clipping facing where necessary stitch and trim so this is the one where we're not going to stitch all the way down to the waist seam because i've attached the skirt facings but we're going to start just below the notch and go all the way around so believe it or not that is the bodice attached to the facing all the way all the way around the outer edge and I am going to sew this at 5 eighths of an inch and I'm going to mark in my pivot points on these corners so that I can do the same thing that I did with the collar because I want to be able to do one stitch diagonally across the point so that they turn nice and pointy for me. As I mentioned I've pinned to the notch and not any further down so that means that when I come to add the skirt on I won't need to worry about the, the whole of this this um, waist seam not being available to do that so this if you're following along with me pin from notch to notch and then we're going to sew all the way around a five eighths of an inch okay so I have sewn all the way around there so I'm now going to clip the neckline I'm going to trim my corners and then I can turn everything out so that I can then get on and sew in the yoke Okay, so rather than uh, slip stitch the yoke into place, I have burritoed it. I wanted to make sure that I could do it before I said, yes, let's burrito the yoke. So what you need to do is you'll have your yoke facing hanging free and you need to roll up all of the rest of your garment and roll it up so that you can bring the raw edge of the facing to the, to the seam line that joins the outside yoke to the back panel and then making sure that you don't catch any of the bodice in that seam you're going to stitch at five eighths of an inch to secure the facing yoke and then you just pull everything out very gently through one of the side seams so we still need to uh, close our shoulder seam for the yoke I have got a tutorial on how to burrito things which i'll link in the description because it does have a very detailed description of how to burrito basically anything so it wants us to slip stitch the pressed edge of the yoke over the seams so we've burritoed the bottom edge but we will need to slip stitch in the shoulder edge and I have pinned it all in place so it's lying nice and flatly. I'm going to hand stitch this into place and I'm going to do that for both sides. I have slip stitched in the front shoulder seam and as I say I burritoed the back back seam. I now need to follow step 19 which is stitch bodice front to bodice back at sides and we are of course going to do that with a French seam. So we need to pin bodice front to bodice back wrong sides together. Okay so I have sewn the side seams wrong sides together at a quarter of an inch. I'm going to trim this down, press it and then we can sew at three eighths of an inch to finish off the side seams with the French seam. Okay, so I've finished off the side seam and now I need to press it. Now, if you remember back to when we started sewing the skirt, I pressed the side seams of the skirt towards the back. So I want to press the side seam of the bodice towards the front so that I can nest the seams at the waist seam. So I'm going to go and do that and then we can attach the skirt. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is stitch our skirt to our bodice. And I have matched up the notches, the side seams. As I mentioned, I've nested the side seams because the skirt seam is pressed to the back and the, the side bodice is pressed to the front. So they're nested together. And there's notches at the front. I've marked the center back of the bodice and I've matched it up with the back seam of the skirt. And I have pinned these together, wrong size together because I am going to French seam this. I'm going to do that at a quarter of an inch first, trim it, press it, and then sew at three eighths of an inch to finish it off. I've finished off the waist seam stitching at three eighths of an inch and I now need to press the seam allowance up towards the bodice and then we can finish off sewing the facing from the notch that we left it at earlier all the way down to the nearly to the hem of the skirt because again I want to finish the hem with bias binding so I need to leave a little bit free so that I can get all the way to the edge of the hem. So I'm going to press the waist seam up towards the bodice and then get the front facing finished. Okay, so I made the giant sleeves and added cuffs to them and I tried one on the dress and I decided that whilst I loved it, it would make the dress very specific 
for, for, for make, to be worn for very specific occasions and not the sort of thing that I would wear all the time. So I've decided to go for sleeveless. So I've run a line of stitching around the armhole at 3 8 of an inch and I'm going to use that as a guide to put on my bias binding to finish this edge. Okay, so I've sewn the bias binding on. So I used the line of stitching that I did 3 8 of an inch away from the raw edge. I have used that as the guide for putting the raw edge of the bias binding onto that. When I started, I folded over sort of an inch of bias binding so that it's nice and flat when or it's nicely finished when I come to turn it all around and I've just overlapped by about an inch again uh, when I have sewn come to finish the the line of stitching so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim off all that excess fabric and I'm going to trim it off so that I'm trimming off the line of stitching that I've done at three eighths of an inch as well so it's just trimming off just inside that line of stitching so that we can fold the bias binding over to finish it and then we can fold it in and hand stitch it down to finish the edge. So I'm going to get this that done, I'm going to trim this and I'm going to get this done on the other armhole as well. Okay so as you can see I have trimmed off the excess and I have trimmed it off so that the line of stitching which that was 3 eighths of an inch has come away as well which means that I will be able to roll my bias binding round to finish that off and then we can fold it to the inside to then slip stitch it into place to finish off the armhole completely. So I'm going to do the same for the other side, trim this and then get this top stitch down. So I've leveled the hem on this dress with using my tape measure. I have put the top of the tape measure at the bottom of the waist seam, which you can just about see there as demonstrated by Papa. And then I have picked the shortest length on the dress, which is 40 and a half inches and then just move the tape pressure around and put in a pin at all of those places. So you can see it's dropped quite a lot at the back there and less towards the sides. So I'm now going to go around and trim using these pins as a guide to level the hem. Okay, so now that I've leveled the hem, I need to finish that off and I'm gonna do that with bias binding. So I've got the right side of the binding to the right side of the fabric and I am stitching in that little ditch keeping the raw edge of the binding against the raw edge of the hem. I was playing bias binding roulette with that and I won. I won by about 12, about 24 inches. Thank goodness for that. I would have I would have panicked if it had been closer than that. Right anyway so I'm going to trim this off and I am then going to go and press the binding to the inside so that I can finish off the facings. I've pressed the binding round to the wrong side and I've just left a little lip of the fabric on the on show so that the binding won't be visible on the hem. So now that we've got it all pressed and finished this hem we can finish off our front facings. So if you remember we stopped sewing probably a couple of inches from the edge because I knew that I wanted to add the binding to finish the hem. So I'm going to continue that line of stitching down there and then I'm going to pivot at the crease here and sew along the crease until the edge of the facing and that way when we turn everything around the hem will naturally want to turn back on itself so I'm going to do that for both sides. So once you've got that sewn in you want to trim the corner nice and tidily so that when you turn this through you get a nice pointy point and we're going to turn it through and go and press it. Then we can do buttons and buttonholes. I used the front pattern piece to mark on the buttonholes and I have sewn them on. I've actually added a third one to the bodice because I have lengthened it by an inch. I've got all my buttonholes in, I have put fray check on them and I'm now going to use the buttonhole chisel and an A4 cutting mat to open them up and then I'll be able to place the buttons. Okay, so now that I have opened my buttonholes up, I have pinned my front edges together and I use a pin through the buttonhole to mark where the button is going to be placed on the other side. So I'm going to use a chalk pen, make a little mark and then move my pin to poke through for the, the next one. And I'm going to do that for all of the buttonholes so that I know where to sew my buttons. I am finishing off the hem by hand. I am going to slip stitch this into place. So I have my thread and I am going to, I've, I've already done quite a portion of this. So what you want to do is take a small couple of threads from the exterior fabric and then you want to go into the bias binding and you're taking a longer stitch in the bias binding, sort of three quarters of an inch. And you don't want to pull it too taut, but you don't also don't want it to be too loose. 
and then just repeat. So a couple of stitches, a couple of threads from the exterior fabric, and then a larger bite of the bias binding. So you just want to keep doing that the whole way around until you have finished off the whole of the hem. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comment section down below and I will do my best to answer them for you. So I don't think I actually filmed it, but I did tack down the facing all the way along the inside of both sides from the shoulder seams all the way down to the hem. And I did that because it's quite a wide facing. I found that even with the buttons and buttonholes, in, which once they're installed, they help the facing to lie flat, that I did find that it was rolling a little bit. I didn't want to get weird lumps <laughs> on the bodice. So I, yeah, I've hand tacked that down the entire way. And I did that with slip stitches, the same way that I showed you that I finished off the hem with the bias binding. I really love this dress. I will definitely be making more of them. I actually, as you know, have made the bishop sleeves for this dress. Well, they're the fluted sleeves on the pattern, but I added a cuff to them. I made them, I tacked one on or pinned one on, tried it on, and I just thought it was a little bit much with the print, the giant sleeve and the giant skirt. It was, it, it made the dress something that I probably wouldn't reach for or wear that often, which is why I went for the sleeveless version because I feel it's much more versatile. I do love those sleeves and I have enough of this fabric that I'm going to make a top and I'm actually considering just using the top, the bodice from this Vogue shirt to make that top because I really love this collar. Although again, because this print is so loud, you can't really see the details of this. So maybe I'll go for a slightly simpler bodice for the to, to add the sleeves on because the sleeves are going to be the statement of that shirt. I'm also thinking I'm going to get a fabric belt made from Harlequin if I have enough fabric left after making my shirt. Although I'm not sure that I will because... I have about a metre left, so it's going to be a tight squeeze, but we shall see. But I really like wearing these kind of shirt dresses with belts. The other thing that I think I will do is I'm going to add a little press stud just to the uh, waistline of this dress, just to make sure that that little area stays completely shut, because at the moment there is a little, it is kind of like rolling forward just a little bit, and I think just a small press stud there would work really well to keep that flat if I was not going to wear a belt, although I think I probably would always want to wear a belt with this. The other thing is this part pattern doesn't come with pockets. I don't think that's a bad thing for this fabric. This is a very light floaty viscose crepe or marocaine. Whilst the pockets would be useful, I don't think I'd want to put anything in them because I'd be worried about the weight of the stuff in the pockets dragging the fabric down. For this dress, that's not a problem, but for if I was making it out of a denim or something a little bit heavier, then I would like pockets in this dress and that will be something that I add in the future. And you can certainly use my how to French seam a pocket, inseam pocket tutorial to do that. And any pockets that you like like from any other pattern can be substituted into this dress and that would be really really easy to do. I definitely think I'll be making more of this dress. I knew I wanted to make this pattern so I put the fabric up for a vote on Patreon and my Patreon peeps picked the peachy floral and I'm really glad they did because I do really love this this print. So you'll be seeing a whole bunch of names going on the bottom of the screen now and that is all of the Patreon peeps that I have to say thank you to for all the support and for helping me pick the fabric for this sew along. So thank you very much, it's very much appreciated. So when I traced this this pattern off, I traced off the maxi version like you see, I also traced the midi skirt version and I traced the short sleeve as well as the really big sleeve. I didn't trace the long sleeve, the long fitted sleeve because I don't like long fitted sleeves on me. I find them very restrictive in woven fabrics. I don't mind them in stretchy knits like this because you know you can you can move but I find them very restrictive in wovens and maybe I've just been making them wrong or picking the wrong size but it's not something that I enjoy wearing so I don't think I'd ever make that one. But I can definitely see myself making a short sleeve version and like I say a midi version with the big sleeves on it. I think that would look really cool. Maybe in a print that or maybe in a solid not a print like this. Maybe something a little bit so there wasn't quite so much impact in so many places. I think that's I think that's what I will be doing going forward. But yeah, there will definitely be more of these dresses. I will definitely be hitting my quota of five and I need to move on to a new pattern. I really didn't make any major changes to this pattern. I lengthened the bodice by an inch. I lengthened the sleeve by an inch, which I actually don't think I needed to do having put the cuff on it, but I like, I like that drama. Yeah, I didn't need to make any other changes to this pattern. I did uh, 
grade from a size I can't remember the size that I picked but I graded from one size at the waist at the bust to another size at the waist and then over the hips as well yeah it fits me really well I'm very lucky that the only change that I had to make was to add an inch of length to the bodice I really like the Dior darts so it's princess themed but it still has shaping at the bust over with some little darts at the bust and I believe they're called Dior darts and so we've got princess seams on the side at the front and the back there's a yoke in this pattern and it has got a yoke on the lining as well you can burrito this it was very difficult to film the burritoing of this yoke because i couldn't get my camera far enough away to show you what i was doing so i'm going to include this tutorial as well of how to burrito a yoke or how to how to do the burrito method and that will work for this dress i did have to sew the rest of the shoulder seams of the yoke by hand so those are slip stitched in there is a lot of hand sewing on this dress which I don't mind at all. I, I enjoy hand sewing. I get to put the TV on and ignore it and, and, and do the stitching. So that's fun. So yeah, all in all, I really like this dress. I am very, very pleased with it. I will wear it. I'm wearing it up to London this afternoon. I have an event to go to on Sunday. So I probably will wear this outfit for that as well. I very much enjoy this dress. If you guys make one of these, be sure to use the hashtag Sean made me do it. If you put it up on Facebook or Instagram, because I would love to see what you make. I always enjoy seeing how you guys use the sew alongs and the things that you make with them and your fabric choices always oh, I, I end up wanting more fabric and I don't need more fabric as you know fabric buying ban is going well so far I hope you've enjoyed this series I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please give it a thumbs up if you haven't yet please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon bye